anything from simple allergy medications that you can pick up at your local pharmacy uh, to more intensive things like cancer therapies that can only be given in hospitals. Now you might think that these different drugs, no matter how simple or complicated they appear to be, are developed in vastly different ways. But they all undergo the same process of drug development. I want to take you on a journey of what this process looks like. So, where do we begin? Well, this is drug discovery in a nutshell. We start with a scientist in a lab who develops a potential drug candidate. That scientist will then test this drug on simple cells and things like petri dishes and test tubes, and then move on to animal models. And these can be anything from mice to monkeys. Now, if this drug shows promise and it can get enough funding, then it'll move on to human testing. And human testing is the part that's called clinical trials. As you can see here, it goes through three main phases. The first phase of clinical trials will be the first time that a drug is ever tested in human beings. And what we do during this phase is we take a very small number of perfectly healthy humans and we want to see what kind of side effects are associated with this drug or how toxic it can be. Now, a lot of people don't think about the potential risks that can be involved in this part of developing a drug. One devastating example that comes to mind is the Elephant Man trial. This was a trial that took place in the UK where six healthy volunteers signed up to test an exploratory cancer medication. The day after all six participants took their first dose, they all ended up in hospital with multi-organ failure. After being in hospital for six weeks, one of the participants had this to say. I had thought it was a good thing being an ambassador for science. But because of this trial, I feel like I was just equipment within a system, not a human being. This is quite a profound statement for this person to say, but I think quite fair based on what they had just been through. And although there are risks involved with this stage of drug development, without it, all of the life-saving therapies that we currently have would cease to exist. If a drug does pass the safety test, then it'll move on to phase two. And this phase is where we start to test a much larger number of people and people who actually have the medical condition that it's intended to treat. And this is where we start to see some truly amazing life-saving stories. One recent example that comes to mind is about a man named Larry. Larry was diagnosed with a very severe form of brain cancer and with no treatment options available on the market for him. He was given six months to live. Out of options, his doctor recommended that he sign up for a clinical trial for an experimental cancer therapy. So he did. And after he did the treatments during the clinical trial, he's now cancer free and living an active life. So as you can see, there can be major risks involved with developing a drug, but there's also so many potential significant benefits. And this really got me thinking. And I, I wanted to know what other people thought about it as well. So I went out. And I asked people the question, what do you think about testing drugs on humans? And this is what they had to say. Take a look. Testing drugs on humans? Uh, why? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, why would you do that? Jeez, these are good questions. No, I, 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 don't, I don't recommend that. I don't think so, no. That's not uh, okay for me, yeah. I know it happens with it but it just doesn't feel right. I think human or animal testing, none of that is okay. So it stress and some standards of ethics that I do not agree with. Life of putting a human in danger is not good, right? Is that the only way to like test a new drug? I think we have the technology and the resources and the intelligence to do things much more differently. I think if we're going to progress um, medicine and to help the greatest number of people, I think we're going to have to start relying more and more on technology to be able to give us that, that advantage. As you can see, this is quite a controversial topic. Why did Larry have to sign up for a clinical trial to get life-saving treatment? Why, when a drug does come to market, is it often so expensive that the people that truly need it often can't even afford it? Well, astoundingly, Developing a new drug can cost over $2 billion and take over 10 years of time. 
Even more astoundingly, only about 15% of drugs actually pass human testing. And when a drug fails, we often don't really know why, and it's simply just abandoned, even if a simple modification could have solved the problem. So let's think about what this means. It means that developing a new drug is an enormous risk for pharmaceutical companies. They invest billions of dollars in over a decade of time for about a 15% chance of success. This is why pharmaceutical companies often don't invest in many potential drug products. We're talking a 20 year backlog of drugs just waiting to enter human testing. So we have a major health challenge on our hands. Simply put, the way that we're developing new drugs is too expensive, it takes too long, and frankly, it's failing much more often than it succeeds. On top of that, we're putting real human lives at risk, and there has to be a better way. Now imagine, humans no longer have to be the subject of costly and lengthy clinical trials, but their characteristics can be so perfectly simulated that the entire clinical trial can be conducted virtually. A computer, lungs breathing, hearts beating, or at least the closest replicas we can create with code, equations, and variables. Just think, researchers can build entire neural, endocrine, metabolic systems, so just to name a few, using the vast volumes of data sets that we have. They can then use these layers of data to build interactive models of the entire human body and all of its physiological processes. The ultimate result? Faster and more flexible clinical trials with a significant savings in cost and time. These fantastic advancements aren't just imagination. They're called in silico trials. We can use big data to simulate drug properties and human physiology then use a very specific type of artificial intelligence called causal AI to understand the cause and effect relationships of this unstructured data. Causal AI will help us understand what's happening with this data, but also so much more importantly, why. And this why is so important because right now when a drug doesn't pass human testing, we don't really know why. Within silico technologies, we'll understand why a drug has failed and how to fix it. And this technology has so many other significant benefits. A virtual human model can be reused indefinitely, unlike real human bodies. On top of that, they can enhance personalized medicine. You can go to your doctor's office, and before your doctor prescribes a drug for you, they can test that drug into a computer simulation of you with your specific genes and your specific physiology. This will take out so much of the guesswork that currently goes into developing treatment plans. And although it's still in its infancy, several examples do depict the potential of in silico technologies to completely redesign traditional research practices. For example, Humod claims to be the most sophisticated mathematical model of human physiology ever created. In the early 1970s, its creators came up with this model of cardiovascular physiology. And from here, Humod has evolved into over 1,500 equations and over 10,000 variables of all different parts of human physiology. The FDA has even advocated for a future in which most of its clinical trial data comes from computer simulations. A virtual human body could eventually make computerized clinical trials the norm, saving time and money and keeping real human lives out of harm's way. We could test thousands of potential drugs on billions of virtual patients in minutes. No humans, no animals, not a single cell would be needed, but the impact of a specific therapy could be perfectly charted. Now, the implementation of in silico technologies does require overcoming a number of barriers. The biggest ones being knowledge, reliability, and adoption. Developing the supercomputers for this and understanding the intricacies of the human body are one barrier. And so is ensuring that any in silico finding is validated and can be reliably used in practice. But one of the biggest challenges will be to resistance to change 
by a very old and a very established set of research practices. And although these barriers exist, I'm so confident that day will come where we're talking about how we used to test drugs on humans and how dated an era of medicine this truly was. Now that's an idea worth spreading. <laughs>